Hi everyone! So today we're here with Tiago, who is going to tell us a bit more about our new project. Hi Tiago! Hi! So could you start by telling us about the species we're aiming to help with this project? What is it? And what's so special about it? And why have we chosen this one in particular? Yes, so uh, this project focuses on the lesser blind mole rat. Um, Nanospalex uh, lo localon, uh, poorly pronounced, uh, <laughs> very likely, um, and it's a it's a rodent, a, a burrowing uh, mammal. So it, it creates these. It lives underground, uh, and it feeds on um, the bulbs of, of different uh, plants. And um, the way this this project came about was that um, our partners in Croatia, at uh, Biota and the uh, Croatian Institute for for Biodiversity. They um, became aware of uh, this species because it, it was it was uh, thought to be uh, extinct in Croatia since 1984, and it was recently uh, found in one location. Um, so that that was very very th those were very exciting news and yeah, <laughs> yeah and and so that's that's what uh, led them to um, to suggest that this this is a project that we could do. Um, to, to try and, and secure the, the future of the species in, in Croatia. Um, okay. Um, so, do you know why it went extinct to begin with? Or why it was thought to be extinct? I mean, I guess it was because they couldn't see it anywhere, but, but why did it disappear? Yeah, so... Um, the, the main threats to the species are the spread of urbanization and intensive agriculture as well. So when you plow a field where it's present, uh, that disturbs the soil. It, it can kill the animals as well, and 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 so you you it, it ceases to be suitable for for them, and and you can lose populations that way. But also because they feed on on tubers such as carrots and and things like that, um, they've also been considered an agricultural pest in the past in in Croatia and. And uh, so they were killed for that reason, and and that is also thought to be one of the the um, factors that led to their extinction in in Croatia. Okay, so now since they spotted this this again, uh, has there been any research or preparations done in this field, or or is this like the first thing that is happening since it was spotted again? These are definitely very early days. So I mean. Um, other sort of government uh, agencies are aware and then so, so there's a bit of a buzz around this and, and that there, there's something that should be done but there's so many unknowns and and there's a lack of and there's no no plan yet about how to, to tackle this and, and how to secure the future of the species um, so um, so that's where the, this project comes in really is that there's like a, we just know that they're around uh, we know that there are possible threats and uh, and very little else, so so it's uh, so it's an opportunity to to try and do something uh, about that. Okay, so what what is it that we're going to do? What is going to happen in this project? The the project it has um, one of the main objectives is to essentially fill in these knowledge gaps. So we want to know more about uh, where where the species has been found, how many in how many locations. Uh, are there uh, other than the places where they have been spotted? Are there other places where they're also found? You know, to get a sense of the, the how how widespread this this uh, population is, um, and so and then also to try and understand what local people's perceptions are towards the species. Try to see if what what threats there might be uh, locally, just by speaking with people, by by visiting the area. And, and, and seeing what's happening there, so it's really very much an exploratory uh, assessment of, of the situation to start with. Um, so that's one objective: is just filling in these these very crucial sort of knowledge gaps. Um, and then the other bit is, or the other objective is to develop a way to actually be more effective at monitoring the presence uh, of this species. Because you can spot the because they 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 burrow right and you can see these these what we call like mole hills so piles of dirt on on, yeah. on the on, on these fields but it's quite hard to to be sure that like uh, if if they are uh, lesser blind mole rat uh, or not and 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 so the way to to that we're 
uh, aiming to address that through this project is to use um, to develop uh, eDNA um, as a tool to essentially be able to get the soil sample, process that sample, and say, does it have uh, uh, does it indicate that uh, this species was present or or not? Because they you know they release fur, different different uh, bits of of uh, that, that have DNA, which we can then uh, detect. But this is something that when you, whenever it's a species that it wasn't done for before, you need to develop it. So so that's part of of this uh, of this project as well. And and the goal is that we we would be able to detect the species without disturbing it because in other ways you can try and sort of capture them then there's like different techniques yeah. but it always involves you know disturbing the animal which which is something we we want to avoid as much as possible yeah of course and uh, we have partners right so could you tell us who we're working with this time we we are working with um uh, Bayota and the croatian institute for biodiversity uh, that are our partners in Croatia, where we, we've been working with them for for a few years now. They, uh, especially on these uh, cave cleanup projects, um, and and they were the ones that spotted the opportunity that, that are implementing it. And and uh, yeah, there, there are partners there. Okay, uh, so once you have uh, gathered this data from the project, um, it could, I guess, it could also help other projects in the future. I mean. All of these methods, also the eDNA and everything else. So if you manage to do all of that, that could be used in the future as well, right? This, yeah, definitely. I think that that's one of the main things about this project is that it just sort of creates a, a knowledge base and 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 sets the ground for for future action. Uh, so the eDNA tools developed can be used by will be available to be used by by other people. Um, the actual data collected about where where they're present um, uh, can can also be be useful for for future projects and um, and also just the fact that as as one of the objectives of, of the project is to understand these threats and and to recommend to to see what actions can be taken um, that will 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 uh, prepare um, future work that. Uh, we can we can uh, implement or, or uh, also with the help of other organizations and, and institutions we can then uh, make them happen. Okay, great. What about risks then? Are there any risks associated with this project, and what are they in that case? I think that because the the project is mainly about developing um, or filling in knowledge gaps, um, I don't I don't see any specific risks of uh, negative consequences. Let's say. Um, but the actual um, path to from where we are now, the plan we have to actually implementing direct interventions that help this species uh, is not the linear one because there are so many unknowns in the way. Uh, so, I mean, I think there we have very good reasons to to believe that uh, we will be able to translate this knowledge in, into concrete actions. But but it's just like how we get there, we still don't know. So there's there's a risk yeah. uh, in a sense. There's a, a risk in in that. Yeah, so essentially what we're doing is laying the foundation for future interventions, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. So, uh, since um, this project would be the initial stage of protecting spe species, I mean, it's hard to kind of imagine what's going to happen in the future. But let's just say, like, imagine that, that we are everything we do in this project is successful and and we find all the information and there will be more interventions uh, which would then lead to an increase in the population of the lesser mole rat um, what would that mean for the ecosystem as a whole what do you what would you like i mean it's hard to, to say but what do you think yes yeah, so um on on the one hand you know the the ideal the ideal scenario is that we actually uh, identify very concrete and and not very expensive interventions that we can do that really make a difference for the long-term future of this population in Croatia. So that's the ideal scenario. We don't know what we will find in terms of what we can do about it, but that's the ideal scenario. And in that case, we would be protecting a, a population that could then uh, grow and and if we if we do things properly could potentially spread to new areas uh, which would be really valuable for for the species uh, for the benefit of this species right uh, that on its own would be 
uh, a great achievement. But then <clears throat> about the the point about the broader ecosystem, um, that's actually something we looked at also when we reviewed this 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 project, as as we do for all projects, was trying to assess the how how this species fits into the broader ecosystem to to also assess the cost and benefit of of of, of the project essentially, mm. um, and one of the things um, that there was we found was this this paper, um, uh, which was published for populations in 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 Hungary, so not not that far, um, where they looked at uh, how this species influences the the plants that you find in in a field. Uh, and whether it influences the diversity of, of those plant species. And what they found is that uh, when you compare fields with uh, molehills, so where you have this lesser blind mole rat present, uh, you would find uh, different plant species. So some species you would only find on fields where you have the lesser blind mole rat and you wouldn't find them on the adjacent plots that don't have it. Um, and also you'd find a different composition, so certain species were at different uh, numbers and and so and, and higher diversity so so it's 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 interesting um that uh, even though they're they're quite uh, small they they still play a role in in, in shaping the the ecosystem so the to answer your question actually sort of the the ideal <laughs> and not go on a tangent the, the sort of the ideal and the, the best case scenario is that we help this species uh be stable uh and ideally spread further uh so that it it can have a uh, a secure future in the region, but also so that it it can play its role in terms of shaping the diversity of, of plants, and then you know you, you shape the diversity of plants, you shape the diversity of insects, and, and it's all connected, right? Uh, so that it, it can yeah. play that uh, ecological role uh, in the future as well. That's sort of the best case scenario. Okay, that sounds great. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, as we as we determined already, this is the first step, right? So. That would be in the future. <laughs> yeah, it's a but it's a small it's a small project to to start with, and and that's also something it's like a it's not a, a very big budget compared to some other projects, uh, but I think it can we I mean I hope it can have a bit of a of a domino effect, and and it's also why we we decided a little bit it was a bit of an emergency kind of uh, <laughs> um, proposal we got from from our partners because you know it was this newly discovered population we don't know what the threats are. So we had to to assess it quite quite quickly, but I'm I'm happy we we did, and and I'm I'm really excited to see how how the project develops. Yeah, me too. It will be really interesting to see what we find, and hopefully also I'll get a look at the species. I mean, <laughs> if it's yeah. possible. Yeah, they're they're. I mean, the 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 photos I've seen of them, they're they're very striking. <laughs> they're, they're, anything that lives underground usually is quite funny looking. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> Okay, but thank you so much and yeah, we look forward to get more updates of this. Yeah, it's exciting. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Right. Bye bye.